Hi, this is Madeline Kennedy, one of the Sistar artists with ArtistMasterSecrets.com and I've been working with y'all on doing a painting here for the little blue cobalt bowl. Before we go further, I'm still in the underpainting phase here, I wanted to explain a little more in depth about a few things. The miskit that I referred to in the last video, I use Peebo because it is pretty fluid. It comes in this larger jar. It also comes in a smaller jar. I, I like the larger jar because I use it quite often. I also use these cheap, inexpensive, student grade brushes to apply my miskit because as you know it's just going to eat up your good brushes and you don't want to waste your good brushes on that. So use a cheap student quality brush. They come in many different sizes, many different shapes. You can get this whole little kit like this for next to nothing and you've got plenty of brushes to work with your miskit and all your other painting endeavors. I also make sure that you put a little bit of soap in a little bit of water and get your brush wet in some water before you apply the miskit. It helps it to flow smooth wherever you want to put it and it just is easier to control that way. Once it all dries, really good and dry is when you can start going over with your over with your painting, with your colors and not have to worry about losing some of these whites that you're saving here. Now I also mentioned the, co the colors I like to use. I like My Merry Blue. They have many, many, many colors to choose from. I have a whole palette of them. I probably have two palettes of Holbein. I particularly love Holbein. And I mark mine if it's warm or cool or opaque and transparent so that it helps me as I'm painting along in the painting I can figure out what what it is I'm looking for. Either warm or cool, opaque or transparent. This is Daniel Smith. It makes He makes a very fine watercolor also. So I mix them all. I also have a few Winsor Newton, maybe a little bit of Sennelier, but my palette is quite extensive. This is one palette full of color. One of my favorite colors right here is this Golden Lake. It's just yummy when you put it on the picture. Golden Lake is used right here and it's some of the underpainting in here. It's a great, great, great color to depend on. There's my other palette. I use all these colors. Like I've told you before, I'm a colorist and I like color. So I work for my warms and my cools and then the color range that I like. I also have a few separate ones up here that I just used, I told you about. This is the Jaunt Brilliant, the Shell Pink, and this one right here is a Hobein Lavender that I put some in the background wash of this, just gently. You can barely tell it. It was washed in, in the flowers here. It was washed in a little bit in here and of course throughout the bowl. So I just wanted to clue you in on those few things. When your miskit dries, you've got your painting down and, you, and the painting is dry and you're ready to remove your miskit. I always use this gum eraser. Saves your fingers a lot. So it's handy to have that and it just rubs right off. The other thing I've done is, you, you probably can't see it very well, but there's little bitty spots all through here. I put some salt in here as it was wet, which is a technique most watercolorists use, or know about it anyway. This is all salt texture in here. When it, and some salt little speckles in here. When it dries really, really well, you have to actually scrub it off. You want all the salt off of your watercolor painting or it will ruin it if it gets any moisture, any wet, in any humid climate whatsoever. It will start to make your painting run. So I scrape my salt off quite 
uh, vigorously, I guess you would say, with a scraper, just like this. I just go over and scrape really, really hard. Get all the soft off. The biscuit then is all gone. You have to really scrape it good, and you'll end up with a pile of colored salt to the side. Once you have all that good and clear, you need to wipe it off. Make sure it's rinsed off good. You want good, clear, clean water. You wet your area where the salt was with a wet brush, and then you blot it. Lift it dry with a tissue. And it takes all that salt residue off, and you won't have a ruined painting one day when you look at it on the wall. So I just wanted to clue you in on that. And now we'll continue and start working up with the more deeps, darks, lights, the right colors for the underpainting, and finish up with the overpainting. Talk to you again. Thanks. Bye.